Welcome back to the homestead everybody. It's a beautiful day out here in the Midwest. Today I have an exciting video for you. I've been waiting for this video for a very long time. I'm gonna show you how to make this 55 gallon barrel compost tea system for your garden. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. If this is your first time checking into the channel, we have a raised bed garden on this side of our property. Eventually, we're going to have about 20 raised beds over here. And so we need a large compost tea system. Now this method can be applied for five gallon bucket to 20, 25 gallon uh, trash cans. In our case, we're gonna be using a 55 gallon barrel. So this is gonna be for a larger system. Spring is bursting forth here on the homestead. As you can see behind me, we have one of our raised beds that is doing excellent. All of our plants are doing amazing over here. These cabbages, these Asian cabbages are just bursting forth with life. We thought all these Swiss chards were going to die. They have all come back with a vengeance, and we are super excited about that. We got our potatoes over here, another potato bed, and some kale down here. Our garden is bursting with life, but one of the main motivating factors on why we wanted to do this compost tea system now is because we have two beds that have some issues and we need to treat them. So our first bed down here looks like we got some nutrients locked up in the soil. You can see there's just some weird stuff going on over here. Our radishes, these are wasabi radishes. Looks like they get big on the sides and then they start to shrink in the center and get big over here. As you can see, this one didn't even grow at all. And we got some small sprouts starting to come up. But by this point, some of those sprouts should be much bigger. So we need to amend these beds and we're gonna do it with our compost tea system. So let's go ahead and get started on this project. So the first thing we have to do is set up our aerator. Now, most people with aerating their compost systems, they use a, a standalone aerator. I'll leave a link in the description below. You can purchase one, you can use one of those. I highly recommend that. In my case, we already have an aerator for our pond. So we're gonna tie off of that pond aerator and bring air hose over to our compost system and we'll aerate it from our pond aerator. So this is it, pretty simple setup. Obviously we already had our pond aerator, so I just continued it over. Originally it just dropped down right here. In my case, I have a valve that I'm gonna be able to shut on and off. And then we drop down and I'm just using a hose as my air hose because I didn't wanna spend another $100 on some air hose to go over to our garden area. So that's our aerator setup and that's how we're gonna be using it. Okay, so here is our 55 gallon barrel we're using. This is a food safe barrel, so you need to make sure that you get a food safe one and one that wasn't used for like some kind of caustic chemical or something like that. In our case, this was previously used to brine sausage in, so we're A-OK, -okay, but we are gonna give it a rinse before we start our compost tea. The great thing about this barrel, and I found this on Facebook Marketplace, I'm sure you can find them in your area, whether it's this version, or whether it's just a standard 55 gallon barrel that you cut the top off and just place the top back on, you can do that as well. Like I said, you can use smaller versions of this, a 25 gallon trash bin or a uh, five gallon bucket. It's all the same, you just need to take your ratios down. In our case, we have this twist off top, which I absolutely love. This is gonna be great for um, just accessing stuff inside of the barrel. Obviously building this whole setup is great. We don't have to cut anything. And then when we're done with it, we can screw this lid back on and we have a closed system, which is great. So we have our barrel, we have our air hose, which is running off of the aerator in the pond. In our case, we're gonna be using pond water. If you're not using pond water and you're using tap water, you need to make sure you treat the chlorinated water. A lot of people do this with vitamin C. Do a little bit of research on how you take vitamin C to treat chlorinated water before you make compost tea. In our case, like I said, we're using pond water, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna be doing is building the uh, aerating system. The air hose is gonna come up, plug into the side of our, our barrel, and then it's going to blow water through this PVC system that we're creating. But the first step to creating this kind of diffuser PVC system is we are gonna do the base. So to do the base, you're gonna need eight 45 degree 
PVC couplings. All of this is half inch. I'm using half inch for everything. So before we ever glue anything together, honestly, I don't know if I'm gonna ever glue anything together because I don't want chemicals in here. We're gonna dry fit everything and if it holds together, great. Then we won't, we won't have to glue anything. The first thing we're gonna do is make our base. So each one of your PVC links for your bottom base is gonna be about seven inches. Now, you need to measure this on your own. Everything's gonna be different. My barrel is kinda of a little bit square at the bottom. Most barrels are gonna be circles, so you might need to decrease the size of these to whatever fits your application. Obviously, if you're using a five gallon bucket, that's gonna to be totally different and you're gonna to need to shorten these way down. But in the end, you're left with something like this and this is gonna be get broken in half. So we're gonna tear it in half so that we can place it in the barrel because the top is a little bit smaller than the bottom. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut one of these in half and shorten it a little bit so that we can fit a T on one side of this. This is gonna be where our main airline runs down to our base. This is a T. Glue, you can glue it on both sides. In our case, we're not gonna glue it. And then in the center, you can see it's threaded. Just gonna cut this in half. Doesn't have to be perfect here. Because we're gonna, we're actually gonna take out a link. So I'm gonna offset a little bit. We're gonna take out a portion. It's gonna go in about there, about there. So we need to take off. Just another portion on this side. Just like that. Put it in. So, then you're left with that. Okay, so before we do our supply line that goes down to our base, we're gonna find out exactly how high that supply line needs to be. So we're gonna come just below my screw on top here. I'm gonna measure it on both sides so it's even. You know, it doesn't need to be perfect, but let's just say we're about 20 inches wide. We'll go right here at this 10. We're gonna come down from the top. I'd say about, now we'll come down five inches from the top. I'm using a hole saw that's just a little bit bigger than the outer diameter of a half inch PVC. Okay, so now we have our holes and all we're gonna do, pass a piece of PVC through, just like that. Now this side is gonna be our supply side. This'll be where we supply the air hose in right there. And the other side over here is just gonna get capped. So we're gonna need just enough room to come off the side there, kind of like that. And then we'll cut this side and cap it. So then all we'll do is take our cap, put that right on. And that's our top bar, which is gonna be our main supply line. Okay, since the barrels are gonna be different, mo most likely different, then you're gonna need to eye a lot of this stuff. So in my case, you know, I want my main, so my, I got my main supply line running in across here. One drop down is gonna be close to the edge. Let's kinda say, let's say right here. Right there. So we're gonna have a cut that we're gonna make here and put a T in and then we're gonna have another cut just right in the center, right about here. And then we're gonna T in again right here. I'm gonna do the center one first because then I can adjust the side. This one's not as crucial as the, uh, as the side one. All right, so we have that. Now we'll grab our T and we're just gonna place a T on just like that, all right? dry fit and everything. And one crucial thing with this is these are threaded. So these are push in or glue, you know, meant to be glued. And then you have a thread on this side cause you're gonna wanna take this middle piece off every once in a while. Okay, now we got our center one. So now we need to actually remark this one cause obviously I moved the mark out. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna break apart our base and we're gonna put this at the bottom. Okay, we got our base over here. Next thing we're gonna do is take a glued in with a threaded and we're going to push this down in here and we are going to connect this together 
down in here. That way it makes it easier to fish it out too. Okay, now we can clearly see where we need to tie it in. So we'll go ahead and make a T right here. We're going to be adding a uh, screwed into this one too so that we can screw into here. So we'll go ahead and cut this one a little bit lower than we need to. Something like that. Okay, so now we have our supply line coming down to our base. And it's all screwed in so we can unscrew or detach all this if we ever glue it in that's why I did that next thing we're gonna do is take a long length of pipe we're gonna put a cap on it now we're gonna eyeball how deep we want this now this is gonna be an aerator post so it's gonna have holes drill in it and then the base is gonna be an aerator post so the base will have holes drill in it let's go almost to the bottom so we'll say about right here. Okay, we got our center length cut. Now you don't have to do these. I did them because if I end up gluing this together, I wanna to disconnect this stuff to take it out, clean it, fix it, whatever. Um, I don't want this permanent on this, um, on this barrel. So you got it screwed in there. Insert your middle piece. And then just push it on. Just like that. Okay, so we got our center pieces built, rough fitted and ready for drilling. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is work on the outside and this is super simple. Again, this is where our supply line is gonna be coming in for the air. And all you're gonna do is take a 90. In our case, we're just, we have the glued in that we're gonna shove on. And then we have a threaded end on this side. We got a 5 8 uh, barbed fitting because we're using a hose. You're probably gonna have something different, but same application, you're gonna go into a uh, half inch thread here. We're just gonna thread it on real tight. And then you're just pushing it on. And that's it. And the very last step for us is just gonna be connecting our hose. So we're gonna put a hose clamp on there. Shove this on nice and tight. And we'll just take our hose clamp sensor that down okay so we got everything put together everything's rough fitted now that I know everything's gonna fit and work fine I'm gonna go ahead and drill some holes so we're gonna be drilling 1 16th uh, diameter holes inside of this pipe and there's no rhyme or reason to how many we're doing I'm gonna start with less to begin with and then increase if I need to that way I'm not depleting a whole bunch of air and then I don't have enough air to bubble the system So we have our barrel complete, we have our holes drilled, and we are gonna fill it up with some pond water and test this thing out. Okay, success. She is bubbling good. I did have to take some holes out of the center one. Um, and right now I think I only have two holes in that center pipe, so Keep that in mind when you're doing this project. Most of your holes are gonna be on the bottom, the base structure, but I'm good with that. That looks like it's bubbling nicely. Later, I'll come back through here and I'll check some of these connections for leaks, but it all feels like it's pretty good. And our aerators are on for our pond as well. That means that this system can handle all of the pressure being asked of it. So, awesome, we got this part done. 
congratulations if you've gotten this far. Let's go right into the next step, which is actually making our compost tea. So all we're gonna be using for this compost tea is worm castings, some fish fertilizer, and some molasses. So if you don't already have your own worm castings, you can buy them at the store. In our case, we're gonna use our worm castings and we're gonna take you in another video and show you exactly how we do our worm bins and how we harvest our castings and our leachate and all of that good stuff. Those are in videos to come. But in this case, we're gonna take some of our worm castings. We already have them in pantyhose. And you can tell when you use pantyhose for this method, it elongates the whole thing. A lot of people use like a compost tea bag. Well, this elongates everything. Now, we're gonna be using 16 cups of worm castings. We're gonna be doing a cup of fish fertilizer and then we're gonna be doing a cup of molasses. But the nice thing about pantyhose is it elongates the whole thing so you really get good coverage when you're placing it down in your bin. So we're gonna take one of our pantyhose worm castings and all we're gonna do is use this top bar to tie it off. Doesn't need to be anything too tight. And just like that, we have one of our one of our pantyhose bags. I'm gonna finish out the packing these pantyhoses and get them in our compost tea bin. All right, I want you to dump this, take that and dump it in here. So when you're doing this, you kinda gotta pack down the pantyhose as you go. All right, another one. Yep, another one. You can get a bigger scoop than that. This is a uh, worm castings, is what it's called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it worms poop. It's getting even fatter. All right, I think that one's good. Let's let's tie that one off. See how it goes right in there. Mm-hmm. And all we do is tie it off. All right. Tie it off. Yeah. Why? So we only need three. Yeah. All right, so we got our worm castings in. The next thing we're gonna use is fish fertilizer, and we're just gonna do one cup of this. Before we put this in, I'm actually gonna turn the aerator on and get this bubbling. All right, and the last thing we're gonna do is do a cup of uh, molasses. In my case, I'm using blackstrap molasses. And molasses is used to actually give something for the bacteria and all of the healthy organisms in there to feed on. So that's why we're putting it in here. So we're gonna let this sit for at least 24 hours, 24 to 36 hours before we start spraying it on our um, raised beds. Uh, when we spray it, we're actually gonna have a pump that comes out of here and we can actually directly spray from this bin straight into our raised beds, which is just a great system. So some of you might be wondering why we aerate our compost tea and there's a, there's a whole bunch of research that you can do to study the scientific details on why people aerate their compost tea but when it comes down to it it encourages the growth of good bacteria and it discourages the growth of bad bacteria you're getting the best possible result out of this compost tea by aerating it the other thing you might be thinking is why go through all the trouble to make a tea well if you're producing all of this great organic material like worm castings and good compost and all of that stuff Making a compost tea out of it makes it go 10 times longer. And so instead of directly putting your compost or your worm castings or your worm lechate or any of that good, beautiful, organic stuff that makes gardens go crazy and vegetables eat it up, well, this is making it go 10 times longer. You can take this, make a good tea out of it, 
and then you have so much more than you had to begin with. Anyway, that's it guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something new today. We'll check back in on this compost tea system and we'll let you know how it's doing. And we'll show you the results of some of our plants that we haven't treated with the compost tea and some that we have treated with the compost tea. Guys, if you're liking these videos and you wanna stay connected with our journey, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to it, and hit all and you'll receive all of our notifications when we release videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.